effective social engineers put in the work to stay ahead of us as IT pros and end users. It's up to us to build the proper line of defense, and that includes kind of going on the offense. And as an IT pro, you have some really effective tools in your toolbox that can help you prevent social engineering attacks. So how can you prevent social engineering? I'm glad you asked. Your first tool in the toolbox is really training end users, that well-trained end user that can basically recognize the social engineering tactics, but also recognize the tools that can support those tactics. One time I was uh, uh, in a really fun, friendly debate with a bunch of help desk pros, and we were talking about what's the first line of defense. Some were saying, well, it's the technology that is the line of defense. Others were saying, well, it's the help desk folks. They really know, they have that body of knowledge, they know the techniques. After a while though, pretty quickly, <laughs> we pretty much came to the conclusion the well-trained end user is the first line of defense. So, what are some of the things that IT pros can do to set end users up for success through technology, okay? So the first thing is, are you using the best kinds of access management and the best kinds of authentication? Okay, so access control basically means principle of least privilege and all that. Is that really happening in your organization? You may need a pen tester or some sort of analyst to help you with that. Authentication is a big deal, not just the password side of it, but the 2FA, the two-factor side of it. If a social engineer is really good, not even 2FA can really solve that problem because they, they basically hook somebody so hard that they even go through a two-factor authentication process. But a lot of times, even that extra little step of having to pick up that mobile phone and look at that extra token that comes in that app or whatever can actually help thwart a social engineering attack. So defining who has access and making sure that only qualified and trained personnel have that kind of access and then also determining good authentication. Very good ways to go. It's one of your great lines of defense. Second, let's not forget that spam filter. A good email spam filter or spam filter applied to a critical business resource is vital. Absolutely vital. They, if they're properly programmed, can stop even the most sophisticated social engineering attack. Sometimes you'll have to do some analytics, you'll have to do some pen testing to make sure that spam filter is up to snuff, that it is basically addressing the most current techniques. So we can't let things go automatically uh, or automatically uh, and just think, well, hey, that's great software, or that's a great tool that we put in there, it'll just do its job. No, we need to be very intentional about our use of various tools, whether it be spam filters or other tools. They don't do judgment for us. We have to exercise judgment and then use those tools appropriately. When it comes to incident response, you've got to have not only a written response plan in place, but one that's been practiced. Uh, not too long ago, I had a good friend of mine call from a, a MSP. He had just taken over IT leadership of that MSP. And he said, hey, we've got a pretty serious incident going on here, and I need some help about the next steps to take. Now, I, I bit my tongue and helped my friend with that. Uh, the reason I had to bite my tongue was like, well, first of all, you, you need a written response plan and you should have practiced it. But rather than shoulda, woulda, coulda, let's talk about some of the things that you have to do to put in place. First, write it down. I know a lot of folks will actually put incident response plans up on the wall, not even on the desk of an end user, because that can get covered up or by papers or books or what have you. But then you have to practice it. And you can practice that by using tabletop exercises, which is basically where everybody sits at the table and says, here's an incident, here's the next steps. Or you actually do physical, hey, here's an incident, what are the next steps that you take? You can learn so much from those different types of activities. You know, the good news about social engineering is that we have the tools and we have the techniques to fight all of that off. We can fight off those social engineers. If we use those tools and those techniques correctly, the odds are in fact in our favor. So take a moment to survey what you're currently doing, what you're currently using, how end users are being trained, and see how you can improve your security posture. If you're an end user, there are things that you can do to learn more. So check out the other videos in this playlist to learn more about social engineering attacks and how to stop them.